just a reminder to subscribe. Love y'all. Bye. Enjoy the show. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. We should probably introduce you because it's been so long. People are going to be like, I don't even know who that is. I know. Is this going to come out next week? Yeah. Okay. So it'll be like two months exactly, I think. Oh my God. Yeah. That's really bad. Where have I been? Oh, I don't know, dude. I've been trying to get you here. Have you though? I really have. It's been a mess. <laughs> Hi, well- guys. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Morgan. That was so cute. You were trying not to cut me off, so you just froze. (laughs) Oh, we're struggling. Oh, we had the best time yesterday. We had such a good night. It was amazing. You didn't say your name, though. Oh, this is Lauren. I'm Lauren. There we go. Hello, everybody. (laughs) But last night, yeah, it was amazing. We had like the best. We had like a little barbecue at Justin's, and it was meant to be like four or six people. I don't know, like a smaller group and it ended up being like close to 20 yeah but it was so cool there was like a guy named Shajid there that like he works for NASA there just was so many amazing people that we like got to meet and we invited um some girls that I met through like podcasting in a sense and then I invited them to my birthday my birthday birthday (laughs) when I bursted out of my mama's (laughs) vagina here we go this is how this episode's gonna go (laughs) But I invited them to my birthday and that's like the first time I really hung out with them. So that was back in March. And now we've like gone to brunch and we've like they came to the barbecue. But it's like hard making friends as a 29, like older, late 20s woman, it feels like. So when people show up, it's just like it's amazing. There's like no better feeling than like someone showing up when you invite them and like (laughs) Like yeah. girls actively trying to make new friends when you're trying to make new friends and you just like it just lines up so well. They were absolutely awesome too. I Steph and Allie. Apparently they were at Morgan's birthday party, but I don't know. I guess I was mingling on the other side of the room yeah. because I didn't remember meeting them and they didn't remember meeting me. But we had the best time with them last night. Like absolutely they were loved it. doing in, like what what even call the voices that they were using? It was like um it's from they the movie. They sounded like Olaf. Or not Olaf. Sorry. They sounded like that that guy in uh, Frozen who's like, Yoo-hoo, big summer blowout. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, I don't know, like a, what's this, like sw- Switzerland accent? Like, Is that it? I don't know. Swiss? Like, yoo Yeah. <laughs> but it's based off of a character. Um, It's from the movie Just Go With It with Adam Sandler oh. and Jennifer Aniston, yeah. Nick Swardson. Okay. And he plays this like Dolph, the sheep shipper. Yeah, yes, yes. And so they were yes. doing a okay. bit. I didn't even know what they were doing. I couldn't stop laughing though. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So yeah, we had a good time. And I hope all of you out there are having a great time. Whatever time it is for you. Yes, we love when people have times. These people and the stories we're going to read today are not having good times. Oh. Yeah, we're getting back to our bread and butter, you know, back to the basics a little bit. Just some deep rooted problems that are very plausible problems. I think I've been scaring people lately with a lot of poop and incest. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, (laughs) I I felt bad after. I'm like, oh my God, people probably think I'm unhinged. But I just love to shock people. Yeah. And so I... Well, also, some people have like a really, really like bad... Like they... I can listen to stories that are like gross about poop and be able to like eat at the same time. Like I've I've told you this. It doesn't... Unless I'm seeing it and smelling it, whatever, it doesn't affect me, the stories. I'm the same way. Yeah. So... But I understand because if you were talking about stories with like some type of surgery or something, like that would make me cringe. So I get how there's some people that are just like can't do it but like (laughs) yeah no it's wild and I I'm all good we're not gonna talk about poop for the next couple episodes so no worries worries. um but yeah let's get into these deep-rooted problems there's some there's some intense ones okay okay let's dive in Woo. And like deep rooted problems, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's like like, you know, how people say like, oh, it's not that deep, bro. I guess like some of them might be even like, is it that deep? Is it a deep rooted problem or is this person just being like 
just goofy. Yeah. You'll, you guys, you guys well, will all tell me. You'll tell I actually, me. Um, so I started going to this therapist. It's only been three times. And something that she said to me that I was like, huh, that makes sense. Because we were talking about just my upbringing and everything in my life. And something that she said to me that kind of stuck out to me, she was like, no reaction is random. Mm. Like it all like, stems from yeah, somewhere. it all stems from something. Like you feel really uncomfortable about something to do with money. Like it stems from something. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So deep rooted or not, like all of whatever you're about to tell me, it all has a. It's not random. Okay, I like that. Well, we'll start with this one then. It is coming from Am I the Asshole. It's titled Am I the Asshole for telling my fiance my daughter has to be in our wedding. I would say absolutely not. I, 45 male, have a daughter, P, from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms, and we share 50-50 custody of P. She is now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiancé, S. S and my daughter get along very well. After five years in my relationship with S, I proposed. S was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. She then told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted P to be a flower girl. S looked at me funny and then said that she didn't think P would fit the part. I got angry and told S that my daughter would be in our wedding. S started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and P wouldn't be one of them. I told S that if P wasn't in the wedding, there might not be a wedding. Good for I him. I stormed out and took P to get ice cream. P knows we are getting married and told me she thinks that she will look pretty in whatever dress S decides she should wear. And this broke my heart. I decided to text S. I told her I would be staying at a friend's to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying that I'm overreacting and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding. And I was an ass for saying that I would cancel. So did I take it too far saying I will cancel? Am I overreacting or just being a good dad? Did he say mother-in-law texted him that? Yeah. What is wrong with them? What? What are we missing here? That is so fucked. This little girl's 11. What the hell? She wouldn't fit the part? What does that even mean? Okay, bitch. This reminds me. Okay, given I'm like with Taylor coming out with her new music, mm. but I kind of like reminded me of that one wedding song. You know what she's talking about? She's like, They'll all have their, uh, this is stupid. Anyway, move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? I just realized it's really dumb that I'm like referring to a Taylor Swift song about this it's a horrible story. But um, yeah, anyway. People, a lot of people will appreciate it. It's it's literally the Speak Now song. Do you okay. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When she's, she's the Speak Now song? No. The album is called Speak Now and no, the song is Speak Now. No one knows that song. I don't, you yeah. know, which I always thought it was interesting she made the album that song because like no one knows that one. No, the only one that's coming to my head right now, and my brain's a little mush, mm -hmm. but it's like, Romeo, save me. Do, 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 no, that's do. not it, but yeah. yeah, that's only like wedding song. <laughs> white dress like that's what's popping in my head yeah. but no but anyway moral of the story is that it just reminds me of the most uptight like prissy little like I, I just can't imagine going through with a wedding like that with no. that whole family not just the wife being ridiculous but like the mother-in-law yeah or the fiance involved. yeah it's actually crazy I just don't get why you would want to exclude your partner's daughter yeah like, you're marrying him Jealous. you're going to be his wife mm -hmm. What? Huge red flag. What do you Immediately think? Immediately call it off. Yeah. Like, what is going to happen down the road with this little girl? Yeah. How is she going to be treated? If she's not even welcome in the wedding, which is literally them uniting these yeah. two families. Yeah. And, oh, sorry, you're not in the wedding because we don't want you in our family. That's like the message you're yeah. sending. What is her life going to look like no, after? It's fucked. Immediately run. Like, I don't even have any advice for this because that is just, that's awful. Like, if you are too jealous that your partner had a you know children before you a wife before you whatever then like you should find somebody who didn't yes you do not need to like like go in and ruin other people's lives like that little girl talk about childhood trauma what do you mean like if her if her dad like followed through with that like how awful would she feel terrible so we do have an update on this one okay but i'll read the top comment first 
big red box, lots of awards. This is a big red flag. If she doesn't want to include her stepdaughter in her wedding, then I don't expect she will include your daughter in her life. Yeah, how could you? Just like what yeah. we were saying. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a, uh, my bio dad got married when I was like, um, I was really little. I was probably like five, six maybe, because me and my younger sister have eight years between us. So they were married for like two years, I think, before they had her. So I was like five or six when they mm-hmm. got married. And she didn't really like me, but I was still the flower girl. Yeah. Like, yeah. she didn't even like me and it's, I was the flower yeah. girl. Wild. Also, what's really scary about this, it's like he even says like, S and my daughter get along very well. Which is like, is that an act then? Because literally, you, do you even like this little girl? Because you're not having her be a flower girl. I'm having like all the movies go into mind right now. Like thinking about Parent Trap and when she's like, oh, so cute to like the daughter right in front of him and then turns around and is like, listen here, you little brat. I'm going to send you off to boarding school the minute I say I do. Yeah, well, and I was like, okay, maybe 11 is like getting to like, you know, like, okay, 13-year-old, I would be like, okay, maybe a 13-year-old junior bridesmaid. Yeah. I literally just had to Google what an 11-year-old girl looks like because, like, I don't <laughs> know what, like, you know when you, like, you, someone holds up a baby and they're like, oh, look at my baby. And I'm like, really cute. How old? And I try to guess in my head. I am always way off. Like, someone the other day was like, I was like, damn, that's a big baby. Like, in my head, I said that, not to the lady. But I was like, oh, my God. Like, is little one two? And she's like, no, only like 16 months. And I'm like, damn, that's a big baby. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell ages. I mean, so from, I had to Google, but from 11 to 13, I mean, who cares, honestly, at that point? Because e- even if my mom got remarried today, if I wanted to be a flower girl, she would she'd be you. like, you're going to be a flower girl then. <laughs> a lot of people remember we had a story where the like someone like asked their friend, like a 30 year old woman to be their flower girl. No, I don't think that was me. Maybe it was Alejandra. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I wouldn't do it. If you asked me to be your flower girl, I'd be pissed. You'd be pissed at me? Yeah, because I'm supposed to be a bridesmaid. <laughs> I know, but... I don't want to be a flower girl. But I, I want I, the important, more important job. I, If you asked me to be a flower girl, I would actually... We've already discussed die this. Die laughing. You're, yeah, you're, you're know, co-maid of honor. I know. So you don't have all the yeah. responsibility yeah. and stress. <laughs> um, no, but I just don't... I don't get this. I feel like even if she like... Because I'm pulling out the comment like she doesn't fit the part. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, why doesn't she fit the part? Do you feel she's too old and you want like a really young little flower girl like yeah what what does that mean even if she just wanted to have one flower girl let's say just specifically because she's you know anal about like the order of everything yeah like you said it's like still have her be a junior bridesmaid or like Mm -hmm. some type of like be a part of the wedding you know it's that's family that's really really close family like someone who's so incredibly important to the person you're marrying how could you try to be this like dictator and just be like nah get out wild i don't i'm really perplexed by this one but let's get to the okay yes please hey reddit thanks everyone for all the kind words and suggestions to answer a few questions my daughter is not disabled chubby or having an awkward phase i did ask if p could be a groomsman s immediately shot me down s is 39 she is the same race as my daughter this is her first marriage I tried to answer as many comments as possible. Wait, sorry. Asked who to be a groomsman? His daughter. Because he's like, well, if you don't want her as a flower girl. Got it. Let me put her on my side. Got it. Okay. Easy. Yeah, there you go. It's good. I came home to talk to us today. When I pulled in our driveway, my mother-in-law was there sitting in her car. I got out and went inside trying to avoid talking to mother-in-law. S was sitting at the kitchen table and I joined her. She sat in silence. So I asked the first question. Why does P not fit the part? And why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answer full on shocked me. She quietly said, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become a holiday visit only dad. I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. What? I literally just got full body chills. Oh my God. God, isn't it crazy how you can think you know someone and then you fucking don't? Wow. I literally have the chills. Like, look at my arm. I'm like, why? Why are you so evil? I'm just so happy that she- This is literally a trap. Yeah, I'm just so happy she outed herself. Like, I'm not even- I'm not even mad. I'm happy because this is a a great ending. Yeah. (laughs) It's a great story. 
Wow. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand and pulled my engagement ring off. Her eyes started to tear up and she said we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change. I told her the damage was already done. Done. I told her I wanted her things moved out by the next week and that she could come get them when my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for. She stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying I was being unreasonable. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three or four times a year. The fact that S wanted me to give up part of my custody blew me away. Wild. How did she, how, like, did she concoct that in her brain? Like, what made her think that that would be a thing? And also, you kind of wonder, too, like, how she was raised if her mom is, like, behind her being like, yeah, this makes sense. How does that fucking make sense? Like, imagine if they had kids together and then they got divorced and then his new wife was like, have nothing to do with your children. Yeah. Or imagine, like, if someone said that to her. If she had children, he got like, you know what I mean? She got remarried and then her new husband was like, nope, can't see your children anymore. Like that is the most psychotic thought of all time. Like it's just unbelievable. It's really disgusting. Uh Uh-huh. He goes on to end it. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and P will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. I, yeah, top comment. Holy shit. First things first, you are amazing father. Yeah. Good on you for having peas back. Yeah. Because we have seen posts that have not gone this way. We yeah. have we have so many stories actually from our listeners on Father Knows Something, my the other podcast we have. And there's so many listeners that are like, my dad got remarried and my stepmom wanted nothing to do with us. She's the worst person. Mm-hmm. We stopped seeing my dad. Yep. And that shouldn't happen. Like, no. Those are your your it's, children. It is shocking like how that this isn't just like a no brainer for everybody. What this guy did, because it is it does happen. And there are a lot of weak people out there. And that's what I think of them is weak, like mm-hmm. because they do want a relationship with their children, but they they would rather just be controlled by their partner because whatever I don't know they just don't think that they're good enough they don't I don't know what they think but like it's it's weak people I wonder like where that stems from right where it's like we you kind of said at the beginning where you're like every reaction comes from like Mm -hmm. it's not random yeah it's not random I love that Mm -hmm. and I just wonder where that comes from and I think you do make a good point about her mom being there like kind of champion this yeah yeah you're right you're crazy you're an asshole you're being unreasonable Mm -hmm. and it's like I wonder. I just, I'm so curious. And it's like, is she an only child? And like, she's threatened, like threatened by that closeness Mm -hmm. that he has with his daughter that he almost looks at. She looks at the little girl as like a threat. Right. Like she's going to interject and not make your relationship as strong. Like just maybe like really insecure attachment. Yeah, for sure. I just, wow. There's a lot of comments from OP. So I'll be sure to post the link for this one on the YouTube description. But he does reply quite a bit. And someone's just like, I would immediately replace the locks. I called a guy. He's coming Tuesday. Hopefully someone goes, hopefully he lets his first wife know ASAP because their daughter is going to seek answers from her mother as well as dad. They sound like they co-parent well, so they really need to make sure they agree on how they discuss this with the 11-year-old. And OP goes, my ex-wife knows about the situation because I had to have P stay at her house while I figure all of this out. Mm. So that's great. Yeah. Um, Someone's like, wow, holy shit. She's been faking this whole time. Wild. Which that's what really scares me. Mm -hmm. That like level of like five-year relationship and you despise this little girl, but you're actually pretending. Also, I think people (sighs) need a reminder that Everything doesn't just change because you got married. Do you know what I mean? I feel like people have in their head that like once you get married, that like everything is going to change. No, unless you and your partner have a discussion of things that you want to do, goals you want, and you plan them out together, that's when change happens. You don't just get married and then everything you made up in your head happens. Like now she's like, oh, it's just me and him now. We get to start a brand new family all by ourselves, have no one else involved. Like, why did you make that up in your head for five years? It's crazy. OP responds back to that one. He's like, I know, right? I wish I would have caught it sooner. I never truly noticed a negative thing. P has never said anything negative about S 
and asked her mom earlier today when she will get to see her again. So like this little girl even felt like she liked her. Yeah. This is nuts. That is that is another level of unhinged. I wonder if it's just like, oh, it's too hard to say because I'm like, maybe she was just going through like a mental break. Like she she all of a sudden was just feeling panicked and feeling so insecure that she didn't know how to like compartmentalize her feelings and she lashed out and acted like ridiculous and she would be able to actually get help and come back around. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she has her mom behind her being like, me, 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 it like makes it hard to think that it's just like a moment of like, you know, flooded insecurity and flooded feelings and not knowing how to channel them. Yeah. It feels like it's way more premeditated. This does feel premeditated because it's like, I don't know if, even if she was flustered and having just like a bad reaction. I don't know if like a sane person, their first reaction would be to jump like, hey, I don't want your daughter around. Let's chip her off. Yeah. Like that's totally. Even when you're upset, like, yeah, you think you'd lash out and be like, I don't really want, you know, pee to affect us. Like, I just kind of want to be selfish and like spend more time with you. Like, right. I don't. But I don't to be know. like, I, I plan, I plan only holiday visits. Like, yeah. Well, and the pictures. That's where you know it was so yeah, premeditated. Exactly. Because she didn't want the little girl in pictures yeah. around the house. Yeah. Because if people come over and ask, oh my God, how's your daughter? Who's this little girl? She's going to be embarrassed. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh God. And I can get how people can be, like feel very insecure about like someone having a family before them and them not having a family like before that person. Don't date people. But then don't kids. date them. You no. don't date. Like, and that's like, like, I know people that are, like, married now, like, a handful of people that are married now to, like, a guy who has kids. Yeah. And they welcome those kids in, like, as if they're their own. When yeah. those kids are there, like, they love them with all their heart. Yeah. They consider them a part of their family. Alejandra's cousin is, like, the perfect example. Yep. She married a guy recently, and they're expecting a little one now. Yeah. But um, he had three kids before her. Mm-hmm. And like they're all a family. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's loves how it them. has to be if you are going to date somebody who has children. That's like one thing I don't get. Like I know it's really hard to get divorced, especially if there's cheating involved. There's like a lot of emotions with that. Like it's it sucks. Like, right. It's a very big, bad breakup. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know why people can't put their shit aside and just co-parent amicably yeah like at least for your kids yeah be kind mm -hmm. in front of your kids especially like there shouldn't be screaming matches there shouldn't be fighting I just saw the most amazing video on TikTok of um this couple and I had never seen their videos before I don't I don't know if they have a big following but they are getting divorced or got divorced and the guy was still coming over to like have a family barbecue in the backyard yeah and like they're not they're not together like yeah they're just co-parenting very well and it's like why can't you do that for your kids right yeah my uh my childhood best friend her parents got divorced and he ended up buying a house like like next door <laughs> like not right next door <laughs> yeah, but like, like down, the street. Street, down the street yeah and so it was really amazing for the kids because they could just literally pick their a, bike like yeah they'd be like oh I forgot something at dad's I'll be right back you know what I mean and then yeah. and then the parents got along so well too that they could just like knock on the door and be like hey could I have some sugar yeah. Like, <laughs> no. And, it was so nice. Well, and Justin and I were talking about that because it's like you never plan for divorce, but like you just like you kind of want like all your T's crossed, I's dotted, yeah. like that kind of thing. And like we were just talking about like because his parents were divorced and it wasn't like there was a lot there. But um, we were just kind of talking like, yeah, well, I think like if we had kids and we got divorced, I don't think we would ever be bad to each other yeah like I could see us being the like hey we're having one Christmas right Justin brings his new wife or right. girlfriend or whatever I have my new partner and like we all come together like right. that is that that's is like beautiful that's like what I will have yeah if like anything we don't work out things right we grow apart whatever it is like that is what I will have well it's funny you say that too about not planning for divorce because at this point in time I mean we're all very educated on the fact that divorce happens very very often yeah it's not this like estranged concept anymore and so it's I actually do think about that when I'm when I'm dating I think about how this person be as a partner how they be as a husband how they be as a, a parent how they be if I got divorced with them how would they be if they were a co-parent to me and I think about those things now because I'm like that's the reality is that if that does happen you want someone that you can rely on even if 
things go bad, mm -hmm. that you know that like they're still not going to make your life hell. They're, they're still going to be like very civil. They still respect you as a person, even if that means that they can't love you in a romantic relationship. And yeah. that like, that's so important. And that's, that's yes. Mm hmm. Yes. <laughs> I think that's like another reason, like be very selective who you have kids with. Oh yeah. Wait. Can and that I, goes every way. Like I if you're keep talking. The but. sperm donor, the egg donor, whatever that looks like, like be so selective who you have kids with. Because even if you can have a good co-parenting situation, sometimes just yeah. So wild. I wanted to, I was talking to my friend about this. And I was talking about how like whenever I question if I want kids, mm -hmm. it lets a uh, releases like so much freedom when I think like it's okay if I don't have them because yeah. it's like it at like our age, it's really easy to get in the mindset where it's just like I have to make this work because I'm, you know, the clock is ticking. I want children so badly and I want to have them with a partner, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And so whenever I feel for a second, like, well, maybe I don't know if I like need kids, then it's this like, like, like weight lifted off my shoulder, like a freedom. Like it's we were like, talking oh. about this the other day too, like thinking about having kids just like gives you anxiety or something. Yeah. And, but I, but anyway, my friend responded and she's like, dude, me and my husband were just talking about how a timeline to have kids causes so many incompatible relationships. Like there's so many better matches for people, but they're scared. And if I can say anything, cause she just had a kid. If I can say anything about having a kid, it needs to be the right person because it has the lowest of lows. I honestly think people are better off doing it alone rather than with the wrong person because you yes. are so vulnerable. So Larissa. <laughs> yeah <laughs> little larissa yeah. yeah no that is so so true mm -hmm. and like i look at what my mom went through because like me and my brothers have the same mom and we all have different dads and like me and my older brother matt like our dads were not great were not involved like mm -hmm. had alcohol issues mm -hmm. and my mom basically did do it alone like it it sucks yeah like it doesn't have it doesn't have to be that way but and it's not to say like single mom, like you're still happy, healthy, loved kid. Like it is better to be alone essentially than with the yeah. wrong person. So. Right. Trigger warning on this one, you guys. It does contain talks of miscarriage and pregnancy loss. Speaking of babies and pregnancy, perfect time for this next one. Cool. I thought you were about to make an announcement. <laughs> no, no. I, oh, I'm going to be so pumped when you get <sighs> pregnant. I'm like, wait, I got to check my little app. I'm like, do I? Imagine if you were pregnant right now. And I just said that. As I'm drinking a White Claw. <laughs> ah! Honestly, as, as long as it's like within the first, you know, six weeks, I'm pretty sure <laughs> drinking's fine. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I mean, so many people find out that. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not saying like recommend it or like prescribing that, but I'm just saying like <laughs> don't drink if you're pregnant. I know, I know people who have gotten pregnant and they had no idea and they oh, were yeah. like partying and everything. Oh, you so. hear that all the time, yeah, yeah, for sure. So for this next one, it is two days old, coming from Suspicious Hair. Uh, it's titled "Am I the asshole for making a joke when my friend told me she was pregnant?" My friend Alice, 32 female, and her husband have been trying for a baby for about three years. I, 29 female, am child-free, but this has never caused a problem in my relationship with Alice. We would often joke about this difference, with me telling her stuff like she'll miss all the disposable income when she has kids, and her comparing my dog to a human kid. Neither of us got offended with this joking, and it was all in good fun. On Friday, Alice and a couple of other friends and I went out to lunch, and Alice told us that she was three months pregnant. I jokingly said, quote, I'm so sorry. Let me know if you need a ride to the clinic. Alice flipped out and called me an insensitive bitch. I told her that I was joking, but she wouldn't hear it, and she ended up leaving. She hasn't responded to my texts and calls ever since. Our other friends are staying out of it and don't want to give their opinions. I understand that my comment would come off as rude if I said it to a stranger, but Alice knows me and this is how we joke with each other. Am I the asshole? I mean, yeah, you are. <laughs> Dude, read the fucking yeah. room. <laughs> but like, I also don't, like she said, I don't think it's that 
that deep. Like, I think it's something that should be able to be recovered from. But I think she also needs to, like, realize that that was wrong to say. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like right now she's <sighs> in the stage where she's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Defense mode. Defensive. And it's just like, yeah, we get that you guys had a really funny sense of humor. But, like, now this is serious. She has a child that she's protecting that's her goal right now. That's her main purpose right now is protecting this child. So yes, to make that joke was insensitive and you should apologize. And I'm sure your friendship can recover. Yeah. I also think like, it sounds like this person thinks like, oh, it's like, I'm child free. She wants kids. Like it's never caused issues, but it almost sounds like she's not truly respecting what her friend wants. Yeah. Like making comments even like you're going to miss all your disposable income when you have kids. She, True. She called that a joke. But yeah, like, maybe she didn't even think it was funny the entire time. I'm like, I don't think the friend. that's even, how yeah. is that funny? Right. And also, why is my income any of your concern? Right. I'm, I'm saying that like she made it seem like her friend thought it was really funny and built yeah. off of it. But maybe she actually was just like okay. trying to like ignore it and just brush it off by like meeting it with another like yeah. humorous thing. Well, and I also think too, like she's been trying, yeah, actively trying That's, to I was get just pregnant about that too. for three years. Yeah, that is fucked. Three years is a long time. Yeah, that is fucked. Like I did my whole grad program in three years, yeah. and that felt never ending. So to actively be trying for a baby for three years, yeah, and every month you get You're right. that makes you it so much worse. So excited, and then you just like you bring your closest people together. And you're sitting mm -hmm. at this table. And after three long, oh hard-fought years of sex, ovulation, <laughs> pee strips, pregnancy tests, being let down, you finally get your moment to mm -hmm. say, I'm actually pregnant. Three months. I'm out of the danger zone. God, you're so uh, right. And you just like, you expect your closest people to be excited and like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then literally you're met with, hey, do you want to ride? To the clinic yeah that's actually so fucked you're so what? right what this is a very wanted yeah like pr like prayed for baby and you want to ride to the clinic let me know when you want to ride mm -hmm. what the fuck yeah i literally just got the chills again i'm like why are people so fucked <laughs> I know. And I, I was at first thinking, you know, like if they just always make jokes like that, then she, you know, she fucked up. Like she thought that was just like a part of their relationship, their humor. But like now, like whenever I remember the three year part, I'm like, that is so horrible. Like that detail alone, knowing that about your friend and then saying that like and on top of it, like she probably like she told them she waited three months to tell them she probably she was, was really scared, so excited and so scared. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so excited when she hit three months mark that she's like, we're good. We're good to go. I can tell everyone now. I'm so excited. Well, and you don't even know what she's gone through exactly. in those three years. Yeah. If she's had miscarriages, if there's exactly. been, you know, pregnancy mm -hmm. losses. So it's like it to be met with that. Now I feel like crying. I'm so, I'm so mad for her. Yeah. I, I would have literally, and like how she handled it is probably so smart. Like remove yourself. Yeah. But I would just like, I would literally... Me and Alejandra were talking about this yesterday where it's like we we think about ourselves and how we respond in situations. And, you know, have you seen that thing where it's like this guy told his wife or this wife told her husband, like, just know, like, I could be so much meaner to you. And we were like thinking about that concept. And like in this moment, I would want to be so mean. Yeah. I would just look at her and be like, OK, you can go home. You're clearly not excited for me. Yeah. You can leave. Yeah. You're not going to ruin my baby brunch. Right. Fuck you. Literally. Uh, oh. She didn't even get a congratulations first. She literally got an, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let me know if you need a ride to that the is, clinic. That is actually so wild. Okay. How? Is there any updates on that? Mm. Okay. So the top or comment. Top, comments that she top comment to. is you're the asshole. Not everything is a joke. She tried for a baby for years and you couldn't give her a moment of earnest support and congratulations. Yeah. This is exactly like people who get up and give attention sucking, allegedly funny best man or maid of honor speeches at mm -hmm. weddings or worse yet, stand up with a jokey joke. Just kidding. Not really objecting objection. FYI, if she has struggled with infertility for three years and you didn't hear about this pregnancy until three months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what I was thinking. She's likely had miscarriages or chemical pregnancies you didn't know about. Even if that's not the case, she almost certainly spent the last couple of months scared yeah. this pregnancy won't make it. Of all the jokes you could make, mm -hmm. that was the worst one. 
God, that was so mean. <laughs> I want to kill this person. <laughs> no, that's aggressive. That's that's too far. But um, they do respond. Okay. <gasps> what? Okay, so someone goes, they've been trying for three years and your first response is to joke to her about giving her a ride to an abortion clinic. Yeah. They've been trying for three years. Yeah. This joke was insensitive considering she may be petrified about miscarrying after trying for so long. Your jokes may have worked back then, but the circumstances have now changed. Yeah. Apologize to your friend. Yeah. You're the asshole. And OP responds, she has actually had a couple of miscarriages. I didn't make that connection. <gasps> Fuck. I get it now. Oh, wow. Wow. At least, at least they get it now. Someone responds after, how did you not make that connection? Yeah, wow. And they go, it was like two years ago and the whole pregnancy slash kids things is so foreign to me. So I didn't really think much about it. Mm, you better beg on your knees apologizing. That's the thing right now where it's like, be child free if you want to be child free, but then don't judge people and ridicule people no, that want kids. That's ridiculous. Like I, you're not high and mighty. Yeah. You're like, maybe, maybe you're doing the planet a favor. I don't fucking know. But like, don't, fucking judge other people mm -hmm. wow i wouldn't i don't know if i would be friends with this person after this especially the fact that they know yeah i had struggled and yeah. had losses i don't think i would be able to forgive them or if i did it would be at a very arm's length yeah. relationship going I forward i agree <sighs> moving along yeah moving along <laughs> i know i don't know it's one of those things where it just like makes me feel i guess it feels a little too real, you know? Like, some of these stories are so, like, mind-blowing that it's just like, wow, like, this guy got his mom pregnant. Like, you know, something that's just so mind-blowing. And a story like this just makes me, like, makes my stomach turn because it just hurts. And you can just imagine how she must feel that, like, her friend going through all of this and then experiencing a comment like that, which is meant to be a joke, meant to be innocent, but it, like— it cuts so deep, you know? It's just one of those, like, little things that just... Yeah, I'm ready to move on. I just don't get how some people think their jokes are funny. It's not funny. In yeah. what world would that ever be yeah. fucking funny? It wouldn't. It would never. Mm -mm. Okay, up next. Wow, that was a brutal one, too. Oh, let's just stay on the, the task of babies, shall we? Mm -hmm. We're really flowing today. It's mm -hmm. nice. Very nice. This one is titled, I ruined my sister's gender reveal out of spite. Straight into it. My sister had been sleeping with my then boyfriend and only revealed the fact after we got engaged. So as to, quote, save me from getting married to a cheater. And because she felt remorseful and ashamed. I broke up with him and cut off my sister, only tolerating her during family gatherings, which I rarely ever came to if I knew she was going to be there. I moved to another state for a job and to start fresh, so I've been away from home for quite a while. Months later, I was told my sister and ex-boyfriend got engaged. To say I was livid was an understatement, but I wasn't going to let them disturb me from my life. Wow. <laughs> I came back recently at my mother's request since she assured me my sister wouldn't be there, only to find out she was in fact there. I managed to calm myself and pretend I was okay with everything. Deep down, I was upset. More at my mom for lying to me, though. It turns out they called me for my sister's planned gender reveal party, which I would have never attended had wow. I known beforehand. I never even knew she was pregnant. But I was there already, so I had to put on my fake smile. Night came, and for the first time in a long time, my sister engaged me in a conversation and apologized for everything and wanted to make up. I wanted to bite her head off and tell her to go to hell because the frickin' audacity. But then she told me about the gender of her baby. She already knew. To try to rekindle the times where we used to tell and trust each other with everything— <laughs> At some point, as we were talking, I was reminded of when we used to be best friends, and honestly, I was tired of the bitterness and wanted to let bygones be bygones. I watched her plan out everything, spend a ton of money, excited and all, but just the night before the gender reveal, 
ex-boyfriend showed up and it took me right back to the past. It kept playing over and over in my head how I was betrayed by them and I got absolutely pissed at how they were happy even after what they did to me. I realized I never had the intention of forgiving them. So in an attempt to get back at them, I told everyone the gender of the baby right then and there. One glance at her and she was on the verge of tears, staring at me with the cheating scumbag. She didn't say anything and just stormed off. It was awkward. Everybody immediately knew why I did it. So it didn't come as a surprise. Nobody said anything and we all called it a night. I'm not going to lie. It felt good seeing them distraught. It brought me a sense of comfort. All their money had gone to waste since she was upset and refused to leave her room. So the reveal never happened. The house is quiet, but I can see the judgmental looks I'm getting from everyone. So I'm booking a flight back because there's no point in me being here anymore. I don't feel an ounce of regret. In fact, I feel peace and at ease. Good. This is an interesting one. I mean, I know it's not technically like the right thing to do, but like I good. Like I'm I don't see I'm I don't feel regret for her either. Yeah. Fuck them. It's like fuck them. I think you know what she did was worse. Definitely worse. Like yeah. you we're having sex with your sister's yeah. boyfriend. Exactly. That's why I'm like, well, yeah, people don't get to see this really overplayed of whatever you want to call it, like show of telling your baby's gender. Don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Don't give a fuck. No. Wow. That's like the like, wham. Well, are you kidding me? Like you're going to go in your room and cry all day over it. Like what? No, you're uh, sorry. I hate this girl. <laughs> I just can't believe they stayed together. Like, Ugh. I can. Ugh. Trash loves trash. <laughs> I love that. Uh, someone goes, honestly, this makes me laugh. Of all the people for your ex to cheat on you with, he chooses your sister. Yep. I think it's funny and they deserve it. Mm hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Fuck him. I don't know, like, why you would expect, like, things to ever go back to normal. Like, you're playing house. Like, it wasn't just like they were dating. They got engaged. Mm -hmm. They were planning on spending the rest of their life together. And then you told your sister. Yeah. And what a fucking loser. Like, the fact that he was cheating on her and then he decides to propose to her during that time. And then he's like, oh, shit, that didn't work out. Hey, do you want to get engaged? Literally a couple <laughs> a couple months later, they got engaged. Oh, like, okay. Also, as the, no. si the other sister, like, the one that was the the evil one mm -hmm. <laughs> wouldn't you like be like damn like this is a pity proposal like like no, i'm second because, i'm second pick no because people like that think like they i won. won i won the man i beat my sister that's how they think they don't think of it like the, the reality that it fucking is such delusion yep such delusion i wonder if there's any other comments from op wow that one really got me jumbled <laughs> it's only four days old it's very new mm. of course the mods remove it um the top comment though is they expected dot 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 something different that's hilarious literally like if if she were rational she would have just been like well that was rude but i suppose i deserve that yeah let's still do the reveal because it's fun yeah <laughs> you know what i mean i mean or just like hey fuck it I, w I mean, you could be like to the to sister, you could be like, hey, are we even now? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Are we good? But the fact I'm that I'm going to go eat my fucking blue cake. Yeah. The fact that she's going to pity herself and cry in her room all day and then get the rest of the family to give her judgmental looks is just like, nah. I'd be over there like, cheers. <laughs> Literally. I know. The rest of the family sucks too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is funny. Someone comments down. They're like, it would have been rude for OP to do that in any other situation. But the guests were probably like, quote, well, she did steal OP's fiance. So I guess we'll just call it a night. Yeah. <laughs> like even like no one, no one even reacted by the yeah. sounds of it. it well, she like said that she felt judgmental looks, but that's about it. Which that could honestly, have been in her head. And that could have yeah. been just like, I feel like people could have been like, dude, what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, what? And that, yeah, that's probably feels judgmental for sure. But, you know, I mean, Ooh. I understand that it wasn't like the right thing to do. And that if you were to like go and talk to a therapist about it, that's not what they like, their recommendation would be. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes moments like this, I just, I like to hear it. I can't help it. I do. Yeah. I'm happy she did it. I am too. Cool. Moving along. 
Oh, Kadoki. So this next one, it's four hours old. Whoa. I don't I don't know why I picked it. It's only got 800 upvotes, but I just really like the title and I, I'm curious. I haven't read it yet. Okay. Both blind reacting. Wow. So it's titled, Am I the asshole for telling my 30 female husband, 35 male, that I don't want to sell the house to save his dog? Hmm. Hello. As the title says, my husband adopted a female husky on a whim before we met. He never researched the breed or anything about dogs. He refused to spay her because, as he says, she wouldn't be a real husky and would lose her personality, which we all know isn't true. She is now eight years old. Side note, the house our family lives in is his, purchased before me, and he is currently unemployed because he lost his job in June and hasn't received government assistance yet. His credit cards are maxed out right now, and he is living off his savings. My salary covers family expenses, but nothing else. In the past year, we've spent a total of 8 k of our emergency savings on emergency vet bills for the dog. One, he gave her a bone full of fat, which I told him not to give her, and she was hospitalized for pancreatitis. Whoa. Two, she had a mammary tumor that was thankfully benign, so surgery to remove the mass— he still wouldn't spay her. Three, she had a phantom pregnancy a few months ago, so another trip to the vet for tests, where I finally convinced him to spay her. Four, the spain. Five, now, three weeks after the spain, she has a large mass on another tit. It's very bad and leaking red. Mm. Since my husband has no job and no income, his solution to pay for the vet bills, multiple tumor removals, chemotherapy, etc., is to sell his car. I have my own that I use for work every day. And then the house that our children and I live in. Okay. He needs my okay to sell as we are married and it is registered as a family residence. He says he refuses to let his dog die over a tumor. He has a very unhealthy attachment to his dog. She basically replaced his dad after his dad's passing mm. eight years ago. Oh. And says she's the only thing he had after the passing. Okay. <laughs> oh, at first I was like, okay. And now I'm like, okay. <laughs> I have animals of my own and I understand not wanting to let them go and doing everything for them. But I think this is excessive. And I think everyone needs a limit where they say, I'm not going to put myself in crippling debt and be homeless for this. Yeah. He obviously thinks I'm an asshole for not being okay with the house and car being sold and thinks I'm even more of an asshole because I financially can't and don't want to put myself in huge amounts of debt for the dog when we are already struggling on one income. So I ask everyone, am I the asshole? No, not at all. And he needs therapy. Like, yes, because that's that's what it is. It's, that attachment to his dad and yeah. connected to the dog. Like, it makes me want to cry. But so he, sad. Needs, he needs to get therapy through that because... It's not, I mean, unfortunately, like those bigger dogs, like they at around like 10 years old, like mm -hmm. that is when it happens. And so yeah. it's just like he has children. He needs to, he needs to focus on the now. And I think that that what's yeah. going on is that he's not, he feels like he couldn't save his dad and he's going to save this dog instead. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's where a lot of this is coming from. So it's like, you're it, so right. It like breaks my heart, but, um, he, he needs to let it go. Well, and I mean, there's so many things he could do. Like, is there other family members that he could maybe borrow money from? If maybe. You, if you put the dog into a, an adoption center too, like there's also a chance like those places get like, so much like funding from volunteers and like they have, you know, vets that are there constantly. So it's yeah. like, there's always the chance that they would help that dog. He would just have to release the ownership. For sure. But there's also a lot of vets that like do give back and do pro bono stuff yeah. too. So like, you know, maybe there's options. But the thing is here, this is like the second time this dog has had a tumor now. And this like, she mentions chemotherapy. So I'm assuming that this tumor yeah. that the dog has now is cancerous. Yeah. And I'm just wondering like, is there more? Yeah. Is the dog's whole body? Yeah. You know, like malignant tumors mm -hmm. everywhere. Because at that point, you have to like also think about what am I putting my animal through? Yeah. Exactly. Chemotherapy is no walk in the oh, park. Yeah. And so what is this dog's quality of life? Totally. Be? It's and that's kind of like why people do get to the point where they have to 
put their dogs down. I didn't really understand when I was younger because I just thought, why not let them live the longest that they possibly can? But yeah. it's like this this animal is in pain, like is yeah. not wanting is, you know, you're allowing this animal to suffer. So sometimes it is the right thing to do. It just sucks. I know this was a really hard decision we had to go through last Christmas, like not this past one, but the one before it. I can't believe it's already been so long, but our German shepherd bear, he was 11, maybe 12, I think 11 though. And he was running outside one day, playing with the ponies, following me around. And then the next couldn't get off his bed mm, was like, yeah. was like coughing up blood, mm. like really just so, so bad. Like we literally all three of us had to like pick him up. He couldn't even get himself up. And so we take him to the vet and they're like, for some reason, he's like bleeding into his stomach. We don't really know what's going on. We can give him like an infusion. We'll see how it goes. So we tried it. He got a little better, was able to get up by himself. But then, you know, three days later, it was the same thing. Yeah. Blood in his stomach. And it turns out he had stomach cancer. Yeah. And they could have like maybe done surgery that would have been like 10 grand or something crazy. But it it might not have even worked. And it would have put him in so much pain and so, like, we made the decision, which is so hard. Mm -hmm. But we decided to, like, let him go on a good day. Don't put him through all that. Yeah. And my brother is, like, still, like, really, like, messed up about it. He's like, we should have done it. You know, Bear would still be here. But, like, German no. to be an 11-year-old yeah. German shepherd is, like, actually, like, it's good. Yeah. Like, I it's literally, so it was so fucked, though. I literally think someone jinxed it. My, um... My sister-in-law's dad came over and Bear was outside like running around the driveway as he like got out and whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wow, you guys still have Bear? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's doing great. Look at him. And he was like literally galloping like mm -hmm. a little German Shepherd gallop. And he looks at him. He goes, how old do German Shepherds live to? They don't live that long. Only like 10, right? And I'm like, I looked it up after and I was like, average German Shepherd lifespan, 9 to 13. Yeah. And he's like, he literally like was like, wow, I'm surprised he's still kicking. He's And he said something like, oh, he's going to be gone soon. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Who You don't say that to someone. Yeah. And sure enough, I'm like, you fucking jinxed my dog, bitch. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case, but I know that that. No, I he's a he's, he's such a nice guy. Amy's dad is so, so nice. But I was like what the hell? Yeah. Why would you say that? Yeah. And then of course, like literally that week later, done. Oh, it's so hard. It literally felt an like animal. a jinx. We actually couldn't, my mom kept saying like, we're, we probably are going to have to put down Oreo soon. Like <clears throat> we had my, it was crazy. We got my dog when I was a baby. Like right when I was born, they got my dog too. And we grew up together. Mm. Like she died when I was 18 years old. Yeah, oh and she was like God. she was like a mix of like a Sheltie, like and a golden retriever. So she was like a pretty like decent sized dog. Yeah. So 18 was actually crazy. And so for like a year, my mom would just be like, say give Oreo an extra hug, like we might have to put her down. And so by the time <laughs> she actually died, like as sad as this sounds, but like I was very like okay prepared. with it. Prepared. Yeah. And like she we ended up not putting her down. Like my mom like kept thinking we should but then she couldn't get herself to she never really seemed like she was suffering she just had like some lumps on her but she Old was dogs get yeah lumps she was too. she was fine she never looked like she was in pain so like we ended up just keeping her until she I woke up to go to school one morning and I was in the kitchen and she was alive the night before and then that morning like when I I saw she looked like a little bit more still and I went down and like touched her and saw that she was gone and oh fuck. yeah that's like really that's kind of traumatic yeah it's really it's hard it's so hard with animals like when my little pony goes i'm gonna be a wreck yeah. he's like he's family i've had him since i was like five mm -hmm. so it's so really hard. sad so i definitely like we get where this is going and it's hard to make this decision but you can't make your family homeless like no where are they gonna go and also, like, do you Your know kids, how— Kids, like— yeah, Exactly. These kids have to go to school. They mm -hmm. need a safe environment. Like, and do you know how hard it is to get a house? Like, yeah. the average person cannot attain a home. No. The fact you have this home and you're unemployed. Like, this is just a total case of bad events. Like, this is kind of like a when it rains, it pours 
And he just like really, really needs to put his family first in this moment. And it sucks. This really sucks. But yeah, this is definitely deep rooted. Yeah. Deep rooted. Does she have any updates? Um, I'll read the top comment and then see if there's any other things. Top comment is not the asshole. Your husband doesn't realize it, but he is slowly sacrificing his family for his dog. It is not anymore the family making some sacrifices, mm -hmm. but really sacrificing the family. Yeah. Also, your husband probably needs some mental help. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if there's any comments. Someone goes, you're the asshole for not having pet insurance, which pet insurance can be very good. You need to get it right away. So they can't say, oh, no, we're not covering that. That's a pre-existing condition. Oh, wait, you can't you can't get pet insurance later into having the pet. You can. But like so Austin's dog, June, like mm -hmm. she has that like funky mm -hmm. like twitch mm -hmm. on one arm. So if she has any health issues like with that twitch, he got health insurance after the vet had documented that like twitchy arm. Oh. So if anything ever relates to that arm and the twitch or neuro they're going to not pay for it because they're going to say that's a pre-existing condition. Ugh, yeah. Fucking but, hate but, insurance. But his, I was talking about pet insurance because like I've heard mixed things. I've heard it doesn't it, pay. It. I've heard I, people love it. Yeah. So I was talking mm -hmm. about it to him and he, she is like the most accident prone, like gets bopped up little dog. Mm -hmm. Like she tears her paw pads running too hard because she's a border collie. She loves the ball. She had a tooth get infected and needed to get that pulled. And the pet insurance has like paid for all of that. I just, I guess the reason I say like love and hate insurance is because it's so, inc it it saves lives, obviously. Like yeah. it's so important to have. It's more just like frustrating. Like why can't they still get pet insurance? Why can't they get insurance over the entire dog if he paid out of pocket for whatever went on with her foot? And then later on, if something else happens to her foot, like he is paying for insurance now. I guess I don't know how pet insurance works, but yeah. like that just seems like funky to me. It is interesting. Well, no, but the, the insurance did pay for the foot and tooth. Oh. Yeah. It just won't pay for the the arm. The, the, yeah, that's the what I mean. But like, why? The, fuck, what do you call dogs' arms? Okay, are leg. you saying... But if... So, uh, that's what I don't understand. So if something more happens, like the leg gets even more like messed up, mm -hmm. but now he has insurance and they won't cover it anymore? I don't understand. Like Because it was a pre-existing condition. I don't know. It's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> also, like... This dog is eight years old. Pet insurance wasn't really talked about eight years ago. Yeah. At least in my circle. Yeah. I feel like it's just become very like household name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, also, one of the things I suggested to him along with spaying her when I met him. And again, one of the things he ignored and didn't do. Dude, I would have a hard time being married to this person. Yeah, I was going to say he sounds kind of like a stubborn asshole. Yeah. That's that's a good way to put it. Next comment. Everyone sucks here. Your husband for not spaying his fucking dog, which could have prevented this. Spaying and neutering prevents a number of cancers and dangerous health conditions. Whoa. And you are telling him he can't sell his own car. Also, chemo is not that expensive. I doubt it'll come to selling your house. Or, I don't know, he could get a goddamn job to pay for it instead of waiting for government assistance. It's not the dog's fault you guys can't pull your shit together. He's right in that a mammary tumor is generally quite treatable and not terminal. And OP goes, I never said he couldn't sell the car. He can sell his car, but he said he'll sell the car and use mine and drive me back and forth to work since he'll need the car. The answer to that was no. The house, I refuse to have him sell. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, OP just have a, another comment here. Like he saw me put my 14 year old cat down in April because he had cancer and no one knew about it. And he was in horrible shape. He left the room while I stayed the entire time. I would never put my animals through pain just to have six more months with them, especially at a high cost to them and me financially. He also said he wouldn't stay in the room with his dog. If he needs to put her down, I will stay with her though, which that is so shitty. I'm like going to get a little dark here. I don't know. I've I've heard people doing both like. But like your animal knows what's happening. Like my horse that we had to put down, it took three extra doses because he was just like fighting it. Like they fucking know and they're scared and they need you. And if you can't handle that responsibility of giving them that dignity and support and grace at the end of their life, you shouldn't get a fucking animal. Mm -mm. 
Like they need you. You're their person. Yeah. You fucking, you can't sit there with them. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Ugh. Yeah. Spay your animals, you guys. Spay your animals. I've also heard though that like if you wait until like, especially for big dogs like German Shepherds, you're supposed to wait until they hit a year mm -hmm. and like really develop and then you should neuter them because mm. that's better for their health. So I hear. But moving along, moving along. This is, this is wild, dude. This fucking life can be so unfair. I hate like all the financial troubles people are in. Like housing crisis, food being crazy, inflation. I just like, it makes me so sad that we're in the state of things we are in. Yeah, I just want like everyone to have like free health care. I want kids at schools to get free lunches. I just want like everyone to be happy and healthy and fed and fulfilled. Ah, it's to make me, am I a communist? Am I so, what does that make me? What am I? Trigger warning on this next one, you guys. It does contain talks of sexual assault. Okay, up next. This one is coming from the Two Hot Takes subreddit. It's 22 hours old. I don't even know what to make of this. It is titled, I found out my female 38 husband, male 37, is taking pictures and using me while I sleep. If this breaks any rules, just ignore this. As the title says, my husband has been touching me in my sleep and recording it. For context, I take a handful of pills every day for medical reasons. They make me extremely drowsy. And when I'm asleep, I stay asleep. I'm very sex repulsed and I hate it. But sometimes I'll just let him have his way because I don't want to make him frustrated or upset. I just found out today when getting ready for work, he was sleeping and I couldn't find my phone. So I was going to use his to call mine. I tapped the screen and it opened up to his photos and there was a recent video of him fingering me while I was sleeping. It's so repulsive. There were photos and videos of him touching me, fucking me, fingering me, spitting on me and nutting on me. I was in fucking shock and I just looked on in disbelief. The date of the photo shows this has been happening for more than a year. What do I do? I didn't confront him. I just went to work. I called him to go back to his apartment today because I didn't want to see him. I felt violated and gross the entire day. I vomited at work. I was so sick to my stomach. I just got home and I didn't know what to do. My husband is back at his place, but hasn't called or texted. I just, I don't know what to do. I just need some advice. Oh my fucking God. That is repulsive. It is completely sexual assault sexual abuse i don't care if you're married that is so fucked up like beyond belief wow i w i feel disgusted too like i want to throw up with i didn't her. i didn't i didn't read this one i didn't realize it was that bad i thought like so bad. i thought it was just taking like pictures of her in her sleep i thought right. it was gonna be like the white whale yeah, story. yeah yeah i like don't have any words except divorce on oh, no. like immediately that is so sickening you can't wow. do that but also i'm kind of confused when she says she's sex repulsed does that mean that she like they don't have like they never have sex then when she's awake um or, i could like, see consenting anymore? well i could see her being like asexual okay. where she doesn't like she doesn't crave sex doesn't right you know asexual can look a little different for yeah every I, asexual person i wonder if that's like a conversation that they had that he was like you know i'm fine without sex too or like how that you would think so if they're married right that's so interesting. but also being like oh well sometimes i let him have his way because right. like whatever but it's like but you don't have to do that like yeah. there's definitely people out there that would like align better with you yeah, like definitely find another person that's like more asexual no you shouldn't ever have to have sex if you don't want to mm -mm. Mm -mm. wow i'm oh, at a loss i'm oh, at a total I'm loss so here disgusted i feel so bad for her holy shit it's really bad Ugh. the top comment on this yeah if you didn't consent that's rape yeah this is horrific. Not a single thing of what he did is borderline okay. Instant divorce. Take the pictures, etc., and go to the police too. Literally. Yeah. There is an oh. update from OP. 
I'm going to find a lawyer and talk to and see what I can do to divorce him. The next time I have access to his phone, I'll send as many photos and videos to myself as I can. I'm scared to call the cops, but I'm hoping the lawyer can help me with that. I also see there was a lot of confusion with a lot of things to clear up. So here's more context. Having different places. I was still on the fence about moving in together. He also never entertained the idea of living together whenever brought up. So I didn't want to waste my breath, time, and money on something we wouldn't enjoy. Wait, I'm sorry. What? I don't... Because she she mentioned, like, can you go back to your apartment or your place or whatever? Okay. And so everyone's like, wait, your husband, but yet you have separate yeah. places? Like, mm. so she she's just, like, kind of explaining that. And then someone goes, or she also goes, day old account. I thought it was obvious this was a throwaway, but I should have mentioned it in the beginning. That's my bad. No comments. I took my meds and went to bed almost immediately after posting. I didn't really want to acknowledge this that it was happening to me. And I'm also just at a loss for words. I didn't know what to say. Mm-mm. Me either, girly. Me either. This is a really hard one. And yeah. I am so, so glad she's pursuing divorce yeah. and like handling this in the right way. Yeah. This is so beyond okay. It's It truly is. That's It's rape. Yeah. It's really bad. Moving along. Because we can't end on that. No, that was like, oh, that shook me in a really bad way. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, let's end on something a little better. Yeah. Do you want to talk about food? I'm like really hungry. We could talk about food. Okay. Okay. So this one is two months old. It's titled, Am I the Asshole for Not Eating Food My Girlfriend's Parents Made at Family Dinner? My girlfriend of four years has a different cultural background than mine. Her parents are not from America, and family and meals are very important to them. I grew up in America, and while we had holiday dinners and maybe a Sunday dinner every couple of weeks, for the most part, mom or dad made something, and then we eat it where and when we wanted. I eat dinner with my girlfriend's parents every week, and I love it. It is important to her, and I have no problem with the different cuisines. It's all delicious food. However, I do not eat a lot. Growing up, I was very overweight and saw a nutritionist. Stuck to a calorie deficit and worked on my portions, and I've been at a healthy weight ever since. My relationship with food has changed, and I no longer have the desire to tear through two double quarter pounders anymore. My girlfriend's parents seem to get offended that I get small portions of things and don't fill my plate up a second time. They will make maybe five to six different food options, and I'll get a little bit of everything because I want to taste it all. At some point, every time I'm there, they ask me if I didn't like the food. They mention the small portions and how I never go back for more. I just honestly tell them I don't want to overeat. They never made a scene about it to me, but I guess they've been discussing it with my girlfriend while I am not there. A couple of days ago, my girlfriend told me that her parents feel offended over how little I eat, which a little is a 100% full plate with a bit of everything made. And some days I eat less and some days I eat more. It really just depends. If I skipped breakfast and had a light lunch, I might fill up more for dinner. But if, for example, I got a decent breakfast, work catered sandwiches that day, I'm going to get a normal, small, sized dinner. My general goal is to have equal sized meals each time, but with a busy work life, that is not always possible. So some days I didn't really have food until family dinner and I'm eating more than usual. My girlfriend asked me if it were possible that I could eat a little bit more just for one day of the week. She didn't push her demand, just asking if it was possible. I told her that I don't want to ruin my mended relationship with food. I don't understand why the parents are so offended. I always pack up Tupperware and eat it throughout the week because it's delicious food. I don't want to disrespect her parents, though. That's so ridiculous. I cannot stand that. Like, no one should ever be policing what somebody else is eating unless they're in, like, a serious health issue and it's like somebody that's like like your mentor or like you know whatever but like other than that buzz the fuck off like that is so ridiculous oh i can't especially when i because i know that feeling too sorry like to no like, you're good but, but no because i've told this before but like when i uh, was in college I literally ate like McDonald's every day and I thought it was healthy because I was like oh well, I'm getting like a just like a chicken sandwich and chicken's snack healthy wrap. yeah snack wrap I like I'm those snack totally fine wow. 
And so anyway, I just didn't understand food health at all. And I was so proud of myself when I moved here and I started eating really healthy. And then I had somebody that was like monitoring what I was eating and was like judging me and was just like, that's all you're going to eat. You're only going to have a salad. And I'm like, I'm so proud of myself and happy with my relationship with food now. Now I know what makes me feel good and energized yeah. because I used to just be like like a slump after I would eat. And then it was like, and so to have somebody like breathing down your, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> yeah. Um, is just so frustrating. And especially since like he's saying that he didn't have a good relationship with food and now he does. It's like, he should not have to like, like, change that just to please anybody else and his girlfriend needs to talk to her parents and set them straight I agree and it is hard because I have someone in my life that has an eating disorder and it is really hard when you do see what someone's putting on their plate and you're like if this is all you're eating like that's not enough for you so it is this fine line of like do I interject because I'm worried about them or like, do I mind my own business because what someone's eating is not my concern? But it is really hard if someone does have like an eating disorder. Like it is, you worry. We all worry yeah. about, you know, the people in our life. So it is a hard line to walk. And like, even I recently learned like telling that person like, oh my God, you look way too skinny. Like this is not, this is not healthy. You should never say that to mm -hmm. someone with an eating disorder because it yeah. actually confirms in their head what I'm doing is, is working. working. I yeah. look skinny. Yeah. So you think I'm skinny? Mm. Like it confirms everything they've done. Yeah. And it makes it worse. So don't make those comments yeah. to people. If you're worried about them, just say that. Hey, I'm worried about you. Exactly. That's oh, it. Hundred percent. That is yeah. it. There's no comments. You're getting too skinny. Are you eating enough? Right. Just I am worried about you. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's why I said to uh in the beginning, I was just like, you should never have something to comment about somebody like their eating habits unless like you're worried about their <laughs> he's slashing your eye yeah unless you're worried about their health and even so it should come from somebody that like is like I said like a professional yeah or someone like like very very close to them not like his girlfriend's parents who are just offended because they like you know what I mean yeah so that to me doesn't sound like they're worried about his health it sounds to me like they're just being ridiculous well and i get the cultural stuff like you hear that a lot like well, did they cultural, did he say which culture i'm sorry if i missed it that. wasn't mentioned just that they're from a different cultural background and they're not from america okay um i'm not sure if there's any comments that elaborate on it but i have heard that in many many cultures you think hispanic yeah. families like hispanic moms I feel like greek too i mean there's so many of them <laughs> like so many cultures are very heavily centered around food. Yeah. And who doesn't love food? But like, that would be a different thing if like he just never ate their food. That's you what, know what I mean. Well, and also when he started to describe like <laughs> his small plate, it's still a full plate. Yeah. It's a full entire yeah. plate of food with every kind of food they're offering. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they think he's like being rude or not yeah. eating. I mean, I know by some standards, a full plate means it's like heaping, like it, it gains height. <laughs> so like maybe their definition of full, like, no, you load it up and it should be stacked. That's just ridiculous though. But one of my thoughts was going to be like, well, at, bring Tupperware and like bring your ass to take seconds home with you. Like, yeah. hey, I'm really full right now, but I'm going to love this later. And that was going to be my suggestion. Yeah. But he got to that. He's already taking seconds home. Yeah. So what? it's like, what, where's the issue? Like, where is this really stemming from? Weird. Weird, I, weird, weird. I don't weird. know. I don't get it. Yeah. I really don't get it. Is there any updates? There's not an update yet, but there is some comments. Someone goes, sounds like something Caribbean or Indian people would do. Not the asshole, but it is also a part of their culture. To be honest, I know it's irrational, but it makes me so happy when my guest eats all my food and asks for more. I am also offended when people refuse my food but you are most definitely not the asshole. It's just a cultural difference. Do what's best for you. And OP goes, the thing is, I'm not refusing. I've eaten every food item they've ever made. I'm not a big fan of fish, but I eat a serving of any fish-related dish when they have it. How how old are th is this couple again? Um, Did, No ages are mentioned, no. mm -hmm. and it's a girlfriend of four years. Hmm. So it's like they've been together 
quite some time. Yeah. And honestly, like, this is the most, like, this is a great boyfriend. Like, this is a great boyfriend. He's coming over. Dude, I wouldn't eat fish. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Like, right. I can't eat something I don't like. And he's even eating right. shit he doesn't like. Right. And then you have these other stories on Reddit where someone's like, am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend not to cook her smelly Indian food? And then he goes on to tell this story. My girlfriend's Indian and she cooks Indian food and it stinks up our apartment or blah, 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 blah. Like whatever it is. And it's like, you have that asshole, yeah. which the smell of Indian food, God, I would take some Love chicken, it. Oh. chicken tikka masala. Oh my God. Brian is making oh. um, yellow curry with his <gasps> like crock pot right now. And Stop. I'm so excited. To I love it. Indian food. Me I love too. fucking Mediterranean food. I'd take some kava. I'll take some Mexican food. I could swim food. in yellow curry. Like it's like my favorite food. A thai food. I could swim in some like. Oh yeah. We had the Tom, best Thai Tom food Ka when we were in Thailand. Soup or whatever. Oh. We never talk about our Thailand trip anymore. I thought about that because you brought it up yesterday and yeah. I was like. That happened. I want to go back. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Well, there. I'm going to the Philippines soon. So oh, I want to go there too. As a very like kind of similar area vibe. Yeah. That's going to be an amazing trip. Oh, I'm so excited. It'll be really cool because your brother's wife is from there. Mm -hmm. And like they haven't met your niece yet, right? Her family? Um, like her mom probably has that's Is a it? good question. I don't know. I'm sure she's meeting a lot of people yeah, now. Well, that's and my, gonna be amazing. My brother has never been, and they've always wanted her to go, or always wanted him to go. And she's turning one, and so it's funny because I'm like, I'm going to the Philippines for my niece's first birthday, that's so and people cool. are like, Oh God, like roll their eyes, kind of like reaction. Fuck them. But no, more so because they just think it's very extravagant. And I'm like, No, 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 don't worry. It's not like we're we don't just like go big for yeah. first birthdays like that. We it's. She's from there. Yeah. Her mom's from there, so. Oh, I thought Geraldine was born there, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Sorry, I meant she's oh. from there. Like, I meant Gwyneth, and then I was like, sorry, her mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I just think, like, I think these people, maybe they had, like, food insecurity. Like, when they were growing up in whatever country they came from, like, maybe they have some deep-rooted trauma surrounding food. So it's, like, the fact that they have it and their ability to offer it now. I feel like it's just passed down. That That's what yeah. it sounds like to me, like, culturally passed down, where it's, like, they couldn't go play unless they ate this amount of food on their plate every single day growing up from their parents. Mm -hmm. And so then now they're just, like, wait, this is how the world works. Wow. You know? He does elaborate too, and someone deleted their comment, so I can't see what it was, but they were making comments about like what he was eating. And OP goes, not small, literally a normal amount. I said small in comparison to what they expect. I eat dinner at their house and fill my plate up with everything. Imagine if someone expected you to eat three large ribeye steaks and three serving of mashed potatoes every dinner. Yeah, I would wild. throw up. It's funny too, because like when I came over yesterday to the barbecue, like I had already eaten. <laughs> I know, and I was like, I'm not hungry that? because I am telling you because I go back and forth to Orange County so often. I throw money away from the grocery store. Mm. I buy food and then I just let it all go to waste, and it's like so frustrating to me. So like, I just had so much fresh food that I was like, I am going to eat this fresh food that I like. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick to it. Yeah, and that's so, good. but I did end up eating later in the night. But right when I got there, I was just like, I can't, I eat can't it. do it. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. There is like a little bit of an edit. Another odd thing I want to add, they will make comments about my girlfriend, who is in great shape, that she is, quote, putting on weight sometimes, but also pressure her to fill her plate twice. I don't get God it. damn it. God damn it. There's another edit. I know you mean well, but the idea of pretending to eat or getting a small plate and going back to get another small plate is just so silly to me. Yeah. I get that all cultures are different. I eat all the different food they serve and follow the religious codes when I'm in their house. But the idea of taking someone's autonomy and having to fake like I'm getting more mm -hmm. seconds is just so ridiculous to me. Yeah. Also didn't know so many people would relate to being force fed and then scolded for being overweight. As a Midwest American, I've never experienced this. Sounds very toxic that so many people can relate to that and the mental issues I had as a severely obese kid and teen. Aww. If my parents behaved in that way, it would have fucked my relationship with food up even more. Yeah. But I guess nothing says showing love to someone like fattening them up and then scolding them for the <laughs> natural weight gain you caused. Wild. I think this needs to be a bigger conversation between him and his girlfriend. Yeah. Because 
if they plan and, his, and the parents like he needs yeah. to sit down with them too and be like listen i appreciate and love this food so much and xyz yeah, yeah. i think that's really smart but her first maybe let her have that conversation but like i don't know if she's even got the strength to because if my mom did that just, yeah if my mom made me like eat two big plates of food and then said i was fat i would be like yeah you're, be you're fat <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> like, I would, I'd be so mad. Morgan really just played that out in her head. And like, had, I'm just like, you, you guys should have seen her face. She just instantly got pissed. She's like, are you kidding me, mom? Like, as if it really just happened. Like, you did this to me. <laughs> you did this to me. Also, like, I'm happy and healthy. I love my food. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. you. So, no, I, I definitely think this is a bigger, deeper rooted problem. And something to really think about, because if they you know, choose to be together. Yeah. If they choose to have kids, mm -hmm. their kids could be affected by this. Right. This type of behavior could yeah. cause their kids to develop an eating disorder. Yeah. And it's also just like, uh, like outside of like the food and health and whatever, it is mentally like, like, me like fucks with your like mental health. Yeah. And I, and I feel that way because like, I remember feeling so horrible that I was so excited about my good relationship. And then somebody that I care about so much, like made me feel like I was doing something wrong. Like it fucked with my head. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not that long, not that deep, but like this over the years, like yeah. that's going to fuck with your like mental health. It just is. For sure. And it's hard because like they're coming from a good place. I'm sure the person like with you, like people just worry. Like I'm sure that was coming from a good place. But again, it's like one of those things where it's like it could be coming from a good place, but it doesn't make it right. And it needs to be addressed. Well, no, because later on, like, that person was telling me, like, that she just has insecurities around food. So if she sees other people eating better or, like, more healthy than her, then it makes her feel guilty about what she's eating. And so if she tells me what I'm doing is wrong. Dude, that's me. Then it makes her feel like what she's doing is right. You know? I, yeah, that makes total sense yeah. and something I can really relate to. It's also why, like, and it's kind of become more wide known because of TikTok and people making like skits about it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if I'm craving a donut. Oh, right. And yeah, I'm like, I've I would those. love a donut. I'm like, Justin, should we go get donuts? And he's yeah. like, no, I'm good. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you almost like, you can't give yourself permission to have that thing unless someone's like right. partaking in it with right. you. I really struggle with that. Yeah. I really struggle with that. Because I always crave sweet treats. Oh, yeah. Always. <sighs> Oh my God, the sweet treats last night were so good. I know. I forgot the bunt cakes at Justin's and I'm like, I got to run. Well, I can have him grab them. But uh, it's all I'm thinking about right now. I'm so hungry. You know, all I'm thinking about is that I have this really long hair right here. and On your chin? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm right here on my neck. Do you see it? No. Wait, hold on. Let me try to grab it. Oh, it is long. Yeah, so long. Wow. Does that ever happen to you? Just like one I get them on really my chin. random long hair out of like somewhere that doesn't get any hair. Like I have one on my arm that will just grow like literally oh, like three yeah. inches on my arm. Yeah, this one. I was looking at it last night. I'm like, oh my God, this arm one's getting way longer <laughs> than the others. Yeah, I always pluck them. I really want to get this one right now. Wait, oh, here it is. Wait. I don't know if you're going to be able to get it. This is such a nice tangent for people to listen to. Oh, God. Okay. Lauren plucking her neck hair. Fuck. ASMR. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Whatever. I'll do I don't think later. I read the top comment on this one. So I'll read that while you try to pluck your chin hair, neck hair. So the top comment on this one is not the asshole. My extended family is this way culturally, and it is considered offensive to them if you reject food slash don't gorge yourself. But culture can't be prioritized over your boundaries and well-being. Yeah. This is a good compatibility test for you and your girlfriend. It will be uncomfortable for her, but I hope she chooses to back you up. Yeah. This will work out. This will be good. Okay. Cool. That's all I got. Nice. That was a good one. Yeah. It's a fun time. Yeah. Low, low key, deep problems, but no poop or incest. Wow. Yeah. Love it. Whew. I'm healed, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but um, there's so much good stuff on Patreon this month. So if you are looking for more content that's like like this, kind of our bread and butter crazy stories, there's a lot of it on Patreon and one that's free. So if you head over there and subscribe, you'll get access to some free stories as well. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Can I see the whole thing? What? Nothing. It's a quote. It's a really bad quote. It's fine. <laughs> what was the quote? <laughs>
<laughs> oh my God, it's so dumb. When I was little, um, so these girls were telling me how this guy was texting them. Uh, when little, I mean like 13, whatever. Okay. This guy was texting them and was like, can I see your boob? And so they were with one of their guy friends and they took a picture of just his nipple uh, to like fuck with the other guy and yeah. sent it to him. And he goes, nice, nice. Can I see the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> And like for like like on end, like months on end, like we would just randomly anytime we'd say nice, we'd be like nice, nice, nice. nice. Can I say the whole thing? <laughs> I like that. Okay. How would I have known? You like I know that's why I'm, I'm like, wait, no, what? I, that's why I'm saying I was just in my own world and I was like, oh fuck, I just said that out loud. And then now I feel I'm like, do I just pretend I didn't say it or do I explain the story? Yeah. No, that was a good story. Now you know. That was a really good story. Yeah. Oh, there's one more I wanna read, but we're not doing it. I'm gonna read it with Someone, fuck. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. You got to get on the road. Yeah, I do. Lauren's driving to Newport. Yeah, it gets really bad around this time. Yeah, you got to you gotta roll. Hit the road. Got to go. And don't you come back no but more. But I really want to know more. the story now. Okay, I'll give everyone a teaser of the title. It, um, it does contain talks of miscarriage. And it's titled, Am I the Asshole for Calling the C Word to My Future Sister-in-Law After She Tried to Gain Sympathy with My Miscarriage. Oof. It's got some, some tea there. Yikes. For sure. Any other themes we should have late later? Hmm. What, sh what do you want to do next? Hmm. I'll let you think about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If you guys have an idea for a theme, head over to Spotify. There will be a question posted where you can fill it out. And I'm sure there's going to be a poll for this story, for this week's stories. Which one? I don't know. Hmm. We'll also think about that. But you it's going to be juicy. You know what I feel bad about? I feel like I <laughs> didn't go hard enough in my initial reaction about really? the um, the girl who made that comment about her friend ha getting pregnant. I don't think we realized the gravity of it right I know, away, though. I and know. then when you really hash it and you're like, three yeah. years? That's what got me messed up because I thought about mm -hmm. three years. Right. And whenever someone tells me a time span, I always try to think of like, okay, like you struggled with something for two years. I'm like, what is an experience I had for two years? Yeah. Okay, this. And then I'm like, <gasps> right. Like, I, cause I need like, yeah. I need a concept of the time. You know what for I mean? Sure. Like, otherwise I can't like conceptualize well, no, it. It just, it didn't like hit me. You know, it was at first I was just like, oh, I mean, yeah, she's the asshole. But I always feel bad when people are genuinely trying to like make a lighthearted joke and then fail so badly. I just feel like bad for them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you cringe. Yeah. Like, and oh. yeah, I'm like, oh God, like you, weren't, you weren't trying to be mean. You just genuinely genuinely like flopped so fucking hard yeah and then and then when I thought about the three-year thing I was like oh fuck that really oh god that's an added knife for Ooh. sure okay well enough chit chat I love you you gotta drive okay I love you if you're not following or subscribed please do that but other than that until next time until next time bye <laughs>